So in this video, we're gonna talk about the concept of 1,000 true fans and more specifically, what that means for you as a coach, a consultant, a course creator, a speaker, or a thought leader. And so the concept of 1,000 true fans was a concept developed, I forget who actually developed it, but it was, a, it was this idea developed, I think over 20 years ago, at the, the very start of the internet as people were starting to realize that the internet was more than just this passing fad and it was this thing that allowed you to communicate with hundreds and thousands and potentially millions of people at scale. And so there's there's a really great article written on this. If you just Google a thousand true fans article, first result that pops up, it's maybe a 10 minute read. And basically the, the writer of the article laid out, it was a hypothesis at the time, sort of laid out a vision where as the internet was, was just starting in the late 90s, early 2000s dot com bubble, at the time as a, as a creator. So if you were someone who had expertise, if you were a musician, if you were an artist of any sort, there were gatekeepers, right? If you were an expert, typically the best way to, to get your expertise out in the world was to write a book. And there were a few publishers who controlled the majority of the distributions and the majority of the market. If you were a musician, there were obviously record labels. They controlled all of the distribution. They didn't like you you did not exist as a musician. You were playing, you were stuck playing very small shows. As an actor, there's talent agencies as a speaker, there are speaker bureaus and talent agencies. And so there's just a lot of gatekeepers that acted as middlemen between the, the actual expert, the content creator, the artist, and their audience, the customers. And so what the internet did is it basically eliminated the middleman and allowed artists, allowed thought leaders, allowed experts to communicate directly with their audience. They didn't need permission. They didn't need a publication source or a distribution channel. And so what this article lays out is it lays out a very, very achievable roadmap for an expert, for an artist, for a thought leader to actually earn a full-time income from their expertise, from their message, from their art. And the way to do that as laid out in this article is to focus on one thing and that's the concept of 1000 true fans. And so the idea of a true fan is a true fan is someone who will buy virtually whatever you sell as an artist, as an expert, as a thought leader. And so for example, in your life, if you're a fan of certain video game studio, you're probably buying every single video game, Call of Duty. Most people have bought multiple Call of Duties, right? Your favorite artist, Taylor Swift comes to mind. Her raving fans buy everything she puts out, right? And so it's the concept of a thousand true fans is it's a fan that is such a fan that they'll buy virtually everything that you sell within reason. And so if you as an expert, as a thought leader, as a course creator are able to create a community of just 1000 true fans, which is not that many people. Most people know a thousand, more than a thousand people. If you're able to create a community of a thousand true fans and get them to even just spend, you know, hundred dollars a year, which is less than $10 a month, you have a full-time income. That's, you know, that's a six figure income. Most people can live off that depending on where you live in the world. And that's, that's a, that's a healthy income. That's a healthy income as an artist, as an expert, as a thought leader. And that's a path that is extremely achievable for most folks with the internet today. If you're willing to put in the work, and if you have a good strategy, and you know, just 20, 30 years ago, it was incomprehensible. You basically had to win the, win the artist lottery to get selected by you know, a record label or a publisher and, and then get your message out into the world. So with the advent of the internet, the gatekeepers have been eliminated and now it is possible to go direct to the internet at scale and actually build your 1000 true fans without anyone's permission. And that's what we do at Thought Leader. So at Thought Leader, we help experts, professionals, and, and thought leaders get their message out into the world where it belongs. And, and one of the primary ways we do that is by helping our clients land TEDx talks. TEDx is the world's largest stage. And by virtue of landing a TEDx talk, you have direct access to over 33 million people through the TEDx platform. That's a very great way to build a thousand true fans. And that's what we see our clients do all the time. As an aspiring coach, consultant, or thought leader looking to ultimately earn a full-time income from your message, from your expertise. If you're not there yet, you have one job and one job only, and that is to build your 1,000 true fans. And you do that 
by doing three things. And we're gonna do my, uh, we're gonna switch over to my mouse here and we're gonna stare at some very beautiful mouse drawings. But there's three things that you need to do to build your 1,000 true fans. Number one is to identify your message or your area of expertise. Number two is to lean into your authentic point of view and have a distinct point of view. And number three then is to create a community. And we're gonna break down what each of these things mean in just a minute. And so number one, what is your message? What is your expertise? Here's the thing, as a thought leader, you are competing against every other source of attention online to you know capture your 1,000 true fans. What that means is that people need a reason to listen to you and, and to pay attention to you. And so you need to be able to add value to people in some way. You can add value in the form of knowledge. You can add value in the form of expertise. You can add value in the form of entertainment, making people laugh, saying funny things on video, making people laugh, that, that adds value to people's life. But you need to identify what it is that you are contributing to the larger conversation and you need to identify what your message and what your expertise are. That being said, the number one challenge that all of our clients face at Thought Leader, we work with anywhere from 50 to 80, in some cases 100 clients a month, what the number one challenge that all of them face as they are preparing to go and land their TEDx talk, the number one challenge they face is imposter syndrome. And there's, uh, I don't want to go down a, a rabbit hole, but there's a really interesting psychological phenomenon called the, the Dunning-Kruger effect, where basically what that phenomenon is, is that as humans, and this happens to everyone, as humans, as the more your actual expertise goes up in a given skill set, the less confident you are that you are actually an expert in that skill. And the opposite is also true. The less skilled you are in a given skill set, the more confident you typically will be that you are pretty good at that thing. And this is a human phenomenon, which means we work at Thought Leader, we work with genuine experts, people who are the absolute best in their field, professional athletes, professors, academics, professionals, entrepreneurs, executives. We work with a lot of extremely influential and extremely amazing people with incredible stories and all of them suffer from imposter syndrome. They don't think that they actually have the credibility. They don't think that they actually have what it takes to go out there and spread their message to the world. And the reality couldn't be further from the truth. The truth is these are, these are some of the most talented people that, that we've ever seen and they need to get their message out in the world. And so how do you combat this, right? Because the chances are, if you're watching this, you're thinking, man, I don't have any expertise. It's not true at all. All you need to do, and, and the, the way that really solved this for me, is, to, is, is a concept known as situational expertise. Situational expertise. And what that means is all you need to do is sit down and take out a sheet of paper and just write down anywhere from you know one to 10 really, really big problems, really, really big challenges, really, really painful things that you've gone through, that you've solved, that you've overcome. And in life, we've all overcome these things, right? Maybe it's grief, maybe it's a past trauma, maybe it's a, a really challenging business experience, maybe it's uh, a, a way to look at life, a, a different way of looking at life that's allowed you to lead a, lead a happy life. Maybe uh, it's, it's something completely different, but just write down one to 10 challenges, one to 10 pain points in your life that you have overcome. And then all you're gonna do is you're just gonna pick one, pick the one that is most appealing to you, and you're just gonna draw a line where you started from, and you're gonna draw a line where you are now. And maybe you eventually wanna get all the way over here, but you're just here for right now. That's totally fine, because what this means is that you are an expert at everywhere from here to here. And there are probably anywhere from 10 million to 100 million people out in the world, if not more, who are stuck here. And so all you need to do is just talk about the steps that you took to get from point A to point B. And to the folks who are over here, you are an expert. And in fact, you are far more relatable of an expert than anyone who's already at the end of the game. I get far more as CEO of Thought Leader, I get far more value listening to podcasts of entrepreneurs and CEOs and business owners who are running businesses that are you know, maybe 
2x or 3x larger than our business. As opposed to, while I enjoy listening to Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos talk, and I enjoy listening to their interviews, it's very difficult for me to find actionable takeaways from a Jeff Bezos, because he owns like half the world at this point, right? It's just not relevant or relatable to where we are in our journey as a business of thought leader. And the same goes for you, right? You might feel like, oh, I see, you know, if, if you're a coach, for example, you see Tony Robbins and Tony Robbins is amazing. Also, he's not the most relatable person, right? Most people can't really relate to Tony Robbins level of success. And so as a potential coach, you are actually in a much better position to connect and build a true community and a true audience of 1000 true fans. And so it's this concept of situational expertise that allows you to break through that imposter syndrome. So that's step number one, identifying what your message is and what your unique expertise is that you have to offer. Step number two then is identifying your authentic point of view. Now, why do we care about having a point of view? Here's the thing, on the internet, there is an infinite amount of content being created every single day day. I recently looked up the stats and this was a this was a blog stat, but it's something like 1000 blog posts are being published every hour or something. You know, there's just a, a infinite amount of content online. And so what that means is if you do not have a unique point of view, no one is going to pay attention to you, right? If you don't have a perspective on something, if you don't have certainty on something, if you're just waffling back and forth, there is too much other content out there. It's just gonna get buried because it doesn't have a unique point of view. What people are looking for online is content that has a point of view. They, they might disagree with it, they might agree with it, but they want to see a clear point of view so that they can weigh it against their own point of view and decide whether or not they agree or disagree with it. And so what this means, it, this does not mean that you need to go out and create confrontational or controversial content for the sake of creating controversial content. What this means is you need to lean into the most authentic version of yourself as a thought leader, as an expert. You need to lean into the most authentic version of yourself and be that unfiltered version of yourself online. And that will guarantee that you have a unique point of view and it will guarantee that you start to attract the type of people that you actually want to build an audience around. Now, why will that guarantee that you have a unique point of view? Because there's only one of you, right? There's, there's only one person who's had the exact same experience, has the exact same perspectives, has the exact same values, beliefs, and skills that you have. And so by definition, if you are truly leaning into 100% of who you are as a person, no one else can match that. And so that creates your unique perspective. The second part of that then is being 100% authentic. A, I, I come from the, the online marketing world and there is a, a massive tendency in that world for marketers to approach content and think through the lens of who do I need to be? What types of things do I need to say? What do I need to wear? What cars do I need to drive that I think is going to get me the quote unquote best response? And the reality is, couldn't be further from the truth because one, it's exhausting to constantly have to think through, okay, what should I say? How should I say it? Is this on brand? That's just exhausting and it's gonna create massive friction in your journey as a thought leader. But what it also can do is it can create an audience of folks that you don't actually want to serve. And so again, the whole idea behind creating a thousand true fans is that you create an audience of people that you love serving. It becomes almost effortless at that point. And your 1,000 true fans love you for who you are, which means it's effortless for you to show up and be yourself. And effectively, you can earn a full-time income being who you are. If you sit down and try and rationally think through and analyze the pros and cons of this point of view versus this point of view and which point of view do I think is gonna generate me the most income, you're going to lose at this game. People can see through that. It used to work 10 years ago, it doesn't work anymore. People can see through that. People are skeptical of folks who are not being authentic to themselves and it comes through in a video. Even myself, it is very clear when I shoot a video, it is very clear whether or not what I'm saying is authentic to what I actually believe or if I'm actually saying something in a way that's not actually in alignment with how I normally communicate. It, it just, it shines through 
Taylor Conroy, my business partner and the founder of Thought Leader is a perfect example of this. If you go watch any of his training videos, he has a great training video at thought-leader.com slash training. It's all about how he landed TEDx Talks and the process that we use to land our clients TEDx Talks. Go watch the first five minutes of that. You are gonna be absolutely hooked. The content's great, but it's not because of the content, it's because he shows up 100% authentically to who he is as a person and that comes through the video. And I can't really explain it other than to say, go check it out. And that's the difference between watching someone who is 100% authentic on camera and someone who is pretending to be someone else on camera. So step two is to create a unique point of view. So we've got our expertise, we've got our unique point of view. The last step then is to create a, a vehicle, is to create a medium through which people are able to communicate with you and most importantly, you are able to communicate with them. So if you're just starting out, maybe you're a little bit tech challenged, that's totally fine. There's two places that I would start. Number one is a Facebook group and or an email list. Now, depending on where you're most comfortable with, I would recommend starting there. A Facebook group is really great for a number of reasons. Number one, almost everyone is on Facebook. Number two, Facebook is really prioritizing their group engagement. And so Facebook group posts are very likely to show up in people's newsfeed, which reminds people that you exist. And then, you know, number three, folks are able to talk amongst themselves. Now, that being said, getting a Facebook group started and off the ground and engaged in a really healthy community does require a lot of work. As, and as a thought leader, you need to be willing to put in that amount of work, which means you're probably gonna need to start posting daily. You're gonna need to encourage other posters. You're probably gonna need to create little competitions and games to get people posting and adding value. But once you get a group off the ground and you really get that, that flywheel started and you get some momentum going, a Facebook group can be one of the most beneficial and impactful ways to create your audience of a thousand true fans and ultimately create a full-time income. So a Facebook group is one thing. If you go with a Facebook group, what I would also recommend doing is creating an email list. And an email list is something where all you need to do is just send an email to your email list once every week, right? More is probably better. A daily email is best, but once a week is personally, is, is perfectly fine. And all you need to do is just update them on what you're up to. Talk about things that are interesting to you. Something happened in the news and you have an interesting perspective on it, talk about it. Did you accomplish something in your business? Talk about it. Just talk about what you're doing and ask for feedback. And what you're going to find is that some of the topics that you talk about really hit and resonate and get a massive engagement. And some of the topics that you talk about just fall flat. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna watch that. Hey, maybe you sent out an email about, you know, Facebook ads one day and didn't really get much of a response, but then the next day you send out an email about YouTube ads and you get 74 replies, right? Start talking about YouTube ads more and just start watching your community and watching what types of topics they want to hear from you. And as they are telling you what they want to hear from you, whether you can straight up ask them or they're telling you with their engagement, start giving them more of that. And what you're gonna find is as you build out your community, you are going to very clearly see what types of topics resonate with them the most, and that's going to give you uh, your, your ideas around what product should you launch first. Is it gonna be a book around a topic? Could it be a online course? Could it be coaching or consulting services? Could it be something completely different? Could it be an affiliate relationship with another product supplier in your niche? The possibilities are almost endless, but it all comes down to your ability to create a community. And so when I was building, so, so I have a YouTube channel, uh, when I was building my community, ultimately it was really strongly focused around Facebook marketing and specifically how to start a marketing agency. And for two years, I answered 100% of the comments that I got on YouTube. I answered 100% of the emails that were sent to me. I answered 100% of the posts in my Facebook group. And what that did is when I finally launched a course around Facebook ads, I generated like $70,000 in two weeks from a email list of less than 5,000 people because I had developed such a relationship with all of those people and added so much value and interacted and invested in that community so much that they all, uh, frankly, were guilted into buying whatever I sold them. 
And that is ultimately what you're trying to do is not, not guilt someone into buying from you. That was, that was a joke, but is to create a true community, a true community of 1000 true fans. And if you're able to do that, they'll be fans for life. And, you know, assuming you continue over delivering, assuming you continue providing more value than you're asking from them in return, they're going to allow you to be a full-time thought leader, be a full-time creator, or be a full-time artist and ultimately earn a full-time income doing what you love. And so that's the concept of a thousand true fans. Again, identify what your message or your expertise is, lean into your authentic point of view, and then create a community around that. And like I mentioned earlier in the video, if you want to see a video which shows you one of the best ways to get your message out into the world and ultimately build that audience and build your 1000 true fans, we believe at Thought Leader that it is to land a TEDx talk. And we have a free training on how to do that. Uh, just go to thought-leader.com slash training. There's also a link likely down here below somewhere in the comments. Go watch that training. It's 100% free. Go see how authentic Taylor comes across in that video, but most importantly, learn how to land a TEDx talk because once you get these three things dialed, landing a TEDx talk is like adding gasoline to the fire and you will instantly create your audience, your tribe, your authentic audience of 1,000 true fans, which is gonna set you up for whatever you wanna do next.